Hello, this is Questionable Coding with Vladimir and today we're going to cover a data structure code Q. It's quite intuitive and uh, it's very well, widely known because we face it in everyday life and we're going to cover several aspects of a Q, uh, starting with uh, real-world examples and then we'll go through uh, different methods that are default or additional in, in Q implementations. We'll also implement queues uh, in JavaScript in two ways and we'll also look through a complexity of those default uh, methods. So yeah, let's, let's start with a definition of a queue. Here's a linear data structure which uh, supports a specific order which is called FIFO, first in, first out. So we have, we have uh, four nodes here and uh, the right one is the head and it's the first element we've added to the queue. And it will be also served first when we'll start using the queue. And also we have a tail element, it was added uh, the last one. And we have links from the first to the last. So each element points to, to the next one when uh, the next one is added. What are the real world examples of a queue? First one is a factory line uh, where we have different elements, I don't know, let's say tablets. And uh, the first tablet, tablet that enters the line goes through different processes and uh, it's a one big queue. So the first tablet will leave the queue the first because it will be fully constructed, which is very natural process. And also, uh, I think the most obvious example of a queue is a queue in, in supermarket or in, in any shop where you have to stand uh, like uh, every person that enters the queue will be the last one in the queue and uh, the first who entered the queue will be served first. What are the basic operations of the queue? The first one is NQ and the uh, second one is DQ. So NQ and DQ it's like insertion and re removal. So it's uh, quite obvious. And we can also have additional operations like pick and empty. And pick operation, it's, um, it, it looks like DQ but without removing an element from, from the list, it just returns the element. And empty checks if the queue is empty. Let's first implement DQ. Uh, we have four elements and we have head uh, for the first element that was added to, to the queue. And then we remove the element using the queue function and we have a header pointer which moves to the next element uh, which was added uh, the second place uh, to the queue. And when we remove that one, we also move to the next one and so on. For the in queue, it's uh, like an inverse procedure. So we have two elements here and we have tail one and head is zero. And when we add uh, two, we just move the tail and we add third element and we also move the tail. So still the zero element will be the first one to proceed when we'll do the DQ and we'll just add it to the left, everything else. So what's the complexity of uh, those operations? Insertions, uh, what, what we need for, for the NQ, we just need to have a new element and we'll switch uh, yeah, first we'll modify the last element so it points to the new one and then we'll move the tail pointer. So it's like two operations and it, it's, uh, um, it's big O of one, which is super good. Deletion is also very uh, simple. So we just remove the element and we also move in a head pointer and that's it. So it will be also big O of one. But for the search, we have a problem. So if we want to search through a queue, we'll have to go through the entire queue. And uh, this is not a structure that should be used for search. So it's, it's not ideal. Now we're going to implement uh, the queue in JavaScript and we have uh, two ways of doing that. First, it's more abstract and we will be using that just to, to show the, the details. And uh, for that, we're using a node class. It's a class with a constructor. It's a node which holds the value, uh, so the data. And it also points to the next node. 
and it will be one element of the queue. If you remember, we have 0, 1, 3, 2, and all of those will be nodes. And we have a queue class, which has a constructor. So we need to specify a tail here, it will be null. And we'll specify the head, which will be also null from, from the start. Uh, we, we should make it them private, but we currently can do this with underline or we can use new syntax, uh, but I will leave it up to you. So we, we, don't, uh, user, we don't want user to access those fields directly, uh, so uh, we expect users to use methods. So the first method will be in queue. What we need to do here is we need to first create the node with data. And we want to check if uh, the head is empty. Don't forget about this. Uh, head is empty or it's null. Then what we want to do is we want to do this head equals this tail equals a node. So we are uh, reading this uh, from right to left. So at first we'll assign node to tail and then the result will be assigned to head and head, both head and tail will point to the same element. And uh, otherwise, so else, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna apply it to, to tail. So for this, we need at first to do this tail next. So there's something in the tail already and it should point to a new element, to a new node. And now we need to uh, move the pointer so tail will point at the new node. DQ. So we need to, we will have to return the data of the node. We need to remember that. If um, it's empty, so if this head equals null, then we'll return null. Uh, but if it's not empty, what we're gonna do is we're going to first memorize a node to remove or move a node to DQ, let's call it properly and it will be a current head, this head. Uh, what we're going to do next is we'll move the head, so this head equals um, this head next. Next, and what we need, we need to return node to DQ data. So we don't want to return the node itself because uh, it holds uh, a link to the next one and we'll just need the data. Pick is quite easy. So what we need is if this head equals null, we'll return null. Okay. Otherwise, we'll return this head data. And is empty is the easiest one. We just return uh, this head equals null. If it equals null, then it's empty. So I prepared several tests for that. But first, we create a queue. Then we check uh, how it looks when it's empty. And then we enqueue one, two, three. So one will be like the first element to enter that. And then we log it with three elements. And then we'll pick uh, the top element, which should be one. And uh, after that, we'll dequeue one element and also output it. It will be also one, should be also one. Then we'll check the queue after this DQ to make sure that this element is really gone. We'll check if it's empty and it shouldn't be because there are two more elements. And then we'll DQ those two elements. And after two more DQs, we'll check that the queue is empty. And we'll call the there is empty method, which should be true. Let's launch it. Let's check. So first, we have um, empty queue, tail, null, head, null. Sounds right. Then with three elements, after we added three elements. 
tail will be three. Yeah, that's the last element. And head will be one, and which points to the next one, which points to the third one. That's good. Then we pick top element. It will be one. That's true. Then we dequeue the first element and return it. It will be also one. And after this dequeue, we have a queue of two nodes. We can check with head. It's two. And then it points to the third node, which points to null. If it's empty, no, it's not. And after two more dequeues, it's, it should be empty. But in fact, it's not. Okay, so we have a problem. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't specify the tail. So if we, we're still pointing at the node 3 data, and we need to check the tail. So upon the queue, uh, if this head equals null, then uh, our um, tail should be also null. Let's do it again. Yeah, and now we have, now it's better. Yeah, now we have uh, empty queue. It's empty, true. That's good. The last thing we're going to do is implement the same queue but using built-in array methods in JavaScript and in many other languages, the queue functionality is already implemented. And yeah, for JavaScript, we're just using an array and we have specific methods to do the same thing that we already did here uh, on, uh, on our own. First, we don't need the node class and we'll still work with the queue using the same methods just to have the um, same test running. But in fact, you can just um, use the array uh, directly. So we'll have an array, we'll call it a queue. It will be empty uh, by default. And to enqueue something, to this we'll just do the queue push and data. Yeah, just to visualize it, uh, now we have something that uh, is going from uh, right to left. So it will be uh, 3, 2, 1. I oh, know that's, that's uh, the word I used before. So it will be 1, 2, 3. And every new element will be added to the right and will remove elements from the left. But in fact, order doesn't matter. So you just need to realize that the first that comes will, out, uh, will go first. And yeah, the last uh, element which comes to the queue will leave it uh, also the last. So DQ. DQ will use another built-in function. We return this queue shift. It will remove the first element with returning it. Pick. Uh, for pick, we need to check if, uh, still need to check if our array is empty. So for this, we need this queue length and it should equal zero. Then we'll return null. And otherwise, we'll return this uh, queue uh, zero element. So it will be our uh, leftmost element. And is empty is also super easy. We already used it. So we'll just return if length equals zero. Let's check it. Oh, it's much more simpler. You have a few lines of code for every method. Um, and after running, so we have an empty queue. It's really empty. And with three element, it will be one, two, three. That's the order I uh, told you about. Then we pick uh, the top element one. That's good. And then we dequeue the first element with returning it. Returning it. It's also one. And after this dequeue, the queue looks like this. It's two, three. Is it empty? False. Um, after two more dequeues, queue is completely empty. And is it true? Is it empty? True. Yeah, uh, that's good. So both options work. And it depends on station when you will use one of them. So that's all about queues. Uh, stay tuned, we'll cover more data structures in upcoming lessons. Uh, I hope you like it.